The default tool, and the one you will use most often, is the Move tool. It looks like a standard gray or black mouse cursor and is located at the top of the toolbar. The purpose of the Move tool is to obviously move objects around on the canvas. It is also used to make transformations to those objects and to make selections. There might be more options to this tool than you first thought. Let me show you more about it. When you have the Move tool selected, just tap on an object to select that object, like this yellow square here. Then you can drag the object to wherever you want it to go. You can also touch on any of the handles to make transformations. I'll just tap with two fingers to undo that transformation. Often when I am trying to move a shape, I will end up transforming it, especially if I'm zoomed out. I'll try and grab the shape and I'll end up dragging one of the handles by accident. To make sure this doesn't happen, you need to be zoomed in close enough that you can touch the shape without touching the handles. Let's talk about some of the modifier gestures to use when transforming. If you want your transformation to retain the aspect ratio, just hold one finger on the screen as you transform. I'll hold down with my left hand on the canvas and with my right hand I will transform the shape. This keeps it in a perfect square. If you want to transform around the center point rather than the opposite corner, hold two fingers on the screen and then use it to transform. And if you want to keep the aspect ratio and transform around the center point at the same time, hold three fingers on the screen. If you want to duplicate an object, hold two fingers on the screen and then drag the object with the finger of the other hand. The handle sticking out the top of an object is the rotate handle. You can simply tap on it and drag to rotate. If you hold one finger on the screen while you do this, it will constrain to 15 degree increments. Now let's talk about the contextual options that appear at the bottom of the screen when using the Move tool. These are down here. These are all essentially toggles that can be turned off and on. First, we have Add to Selection. When you tap this, it turns on, and you go into a mode where everything you click on will be added to your selection without deselecting anything unless you click it again. So I can click on this group of squares over here, and that will be added to my selection. And I can click on these squares down here, and they will also be added to my selection. Normally, with the Add Selection turned off, I can only click on one thing at a time. If I want to add more things to a selection without turning on Add to Selection, I can choose one option, hold down with one finger, and then tap on objects with another finger like so. Turning on Select Under will let you choose objects that are underneath other objects. This is helpful when you have a complicated document and try and select something that's overlapping. Select Inside is a little bit different, so I'll show you how that works. Select Inside lets you select an object that is clipped inside of another object without selecting the whole clipping group. For example, this teal square is clipped inside the yellow square. If I have select inside turned on and tap the teal square, I can get just that square and then I can move and modify it. Without select inside on, I will select the entire clipped group and move and modify them together. The about center option is a way of quickly sending the anchor point of the object to be in the center. This way all transformations will happen around the center of an object without having to use the shortcut key. Next we have these four little options. First is the reset selection box. This only works after you have modified an object by rotating or transforming it. Then if you reset it, the selection box will be reset to be a square around the object. Next is a little crosshair. This will allow you to set the rotation point of the object anywhere you want. Then when you rotate, the object will always rotate around that point. Then we have a little lock with a box icon. This locks child elements. So if I choose this square with the teal square clipped inside it and I lock the child element, when I transform the yellow square, the teal square will not be transformed. 
Lastly, we have the hide selection box option. This option makes it so that the selection box disappears while you are transforming. That's it for the move tool. Next we'll talk about the node tool.